Hi, y'all. Chad Daybell's attorney wants out of the case. There are just four months left, really less actually, to get to the death penalty murder trial for Chad Daybell. Chad's attorney, John Pryor, wants to stop representing Chad Daybell. This is an extremely tough issue for the court to deal with, and I'm going to try to explain why. Now, what does, and starting over, Chad Daybell's attorney wants out of the case. With just four months ago until the death penalty trial of Chad Daybell, his attorney, John Pryor, wants to get out of the case. This is an extremely hard issue for the court to deal with, and I want to talk about why. Now, before I forget, please hit that like button and subscribe. We'd love to have you back. Let's get into today's video. Chad Daybell is accused of murdering the children of Lori Vallow Daybell, JJ and Tylee, as well as his own wife, Tammy Daybell. After Tammy died, Chad married Lori Vallow Daybell. Now, Lori has already had her trial. She was convicted of murder, but the death penalty was not on the table for her. While the state initially asked for it in her case, the court took it off the table as a sanction for the state being late with discovery they've been supposed to turn over. But the state is still seeking the death penalty against Chad. Now, after years of waiting, the trial is finally four months away. And then just this past week, Chad's lawyer, John Pryor, filed a motion asking to get out of the case. This is the motion that John Pryor filed. And we'll take a look at the parts that I've highlighted. Since May 25th, 2021, undersigned counsel, that's John Pryor, has represented Mr. Daybell in this case and the related previous case. Undersigned counsel has undertaken as sole counsel all matters of representation. Mr. Daybell retained undersigned counsel with personal funds. At a hearing on January 19th, 2023, this court inquired of Mr. Daybell and declared him indigent pursuant to Idaho statute. Mr. Daybell does not have the ability to pay for counsel's continued services, and Mr. Daybell seeks the appointment of two capital qualified attorneys to represent him in this matter. So John Pryor has represented Chad Daybell for two and a half years and only now wants out. And Chad wants not one, but two lawyers to replace John Pryor. Uh, now, I was curious, there was some insurance money. Does Chad really not have the money to pay for John Pryor? Which made me ask the question, what would it take to pay for an attorney to represent someone in a death penalty case? I know it would be extraordinary, but I wasn't sure just how much it would be. And I wanted to be able to explain it to you. There's a group called deathpenaltyinfo.org that collects studies about the death penalty. And this study looked at how much time and money it costs to use public defenders. According to the study, on average, the public defense attorney spent 2,298 hours on a capital murder case, which is more than a full year, full work year of life. And the cost of the county was $229,800 for a public defender, even higher, $287,250 for appointed counsel. So very few people could afford that. And Chad Daybell almost surely could not because he's been in jail for years by now. Now let's keep reading in the motion. As the court is aware, this case is both extraordinarily complex and the prosecution is seeking the death penalty, which requires counsel to essentially prepare for two trials. This court has set aside two full months for a trial and the prosecution team consists of no less than five attorneys from two county offices including an out-of-state attorney hired at taxpayer expense. Now, for the prosecution to get five lawyers to one for the defense, that does seem like a clear mismatch. And I will say this, it would be extremely tough to do a several weeks long trial by yourself. A long trial is beyond exhausting. You work all day at maximum mental capacity, and then your brain, I mean, your brain has to be tuned in every second. If you're the one asking the questions, you have to be listening to the answer and you have to be formulating your next question. And if the other side is asking questions, you have to be tuned in so closely that you're listening to every word and you have to be quick mentally because you need to be able to jump up and object before the witness even answers the question if there's a reason to object. So it's very mentally exhausting. And then when you leave the courthouse, 
your work day is not in any way over. You still have to get ready for all of the witnesses the next day. And with John Pryor being the only lawyer on the case, he has to examine or cross-examine every single witness while the state is spreading the job out over as many as five attorneys, however many actually come to trial. Now that is overwhelming. And let me explain what he means about the two trials. Phase one of the trial will be about whether Chad is guilty. Phase two will be about whether he gets the death penalty. Both of those phases would have witnesses and each phase would have different arguments. Idaho law even allows for a second jury for the death penalty phase if the first one can't continue to serve. In practical terms, the second phase is going to be shorter. It's going to be less involved, but there would be two separate phases, and that's what he's talking about. We'll keep reading. Remaining on this case would require undersigned counsel to work around the clock more than full time for more than four months without compensation and without the assistance of any other counsel. He's not kidding about the requirement to prepare. That is a very all-consuming process. And he's saying the stakes are incredibly high for Chad Daybell because it is life or death. And I'm going to work like crazy for four months and I'm going to do it for free. I'm not going to be paid for that. Now, in theory, there could be a solution to that problem, right? The court could appoint John Pryor and have him be the lawyer paid by the state because the state has funds to and is willing to pay for a lawyer. And that's their requirement. They must do that. Now, that could solve a lot of problems, right? Because John Pryor already knows the case. And the court has already found that Chad Daybell is indigent, so he qualifies to have the state pay for his attorney. But there's a big problem with that, and we will find it out just a little bit further down in the motion. Now, John Pryor filed an affidavit supporting this motion, and he said in that affidavit that Chad Daybell is on board with getting new attorneys. He said, Chad believes it would be a disservice for me to continue to represent him in a capital case and trial without compensation. And you can understand why, right? I mean, because if John Pryor is not going to get any pay at all, he's going to want to and need to continue working on other cases that will pay him just in order to pay his bills. And it takes a lot of commitment to maintain that same level of enthusiasm in a case if you know you're not going to be paid. So maybe Chad doesn't feel comfortable with just how much work would be put in on his case. Would it be enough? Let's keep reading. This motion is made with Mr. Daybell's full consent. Why does he throw that in? The, the reason is, and here I want to get into a little compare and contrast with the Delphi murders case that we've also covered here on the channel. Now, in that case, Judge Gull removed the lawyers who were representing Richard Allen and did so against their will. The lawyers wanted to stay in the case. They've been doing a tremendous amount of work. I thought they have been doing it well, but the judge removed them. It's not that the judge can't do that. It's just that that's not at all the way it normally works. And in the Richard Allen case, the lawyers have asked the Indiana Supreme Court to let them back in on the case. Now, what you see here with Chad Daybell, that's much more normal, where the attorney wants out and the court is going to make a decision about whether that's going to be allowed. Let me show you how it's going to work. This is the Idaho statute about leave to withdraw. And here's what it says. No attorney may withdraw as an attorney of record for any defendant in any criminal action without first obtaining leave and order of the court on notice to the prosecuting attorney and the defendant, except as provided in this rule. Leave to withdraw as the attorney of record for a defendant may be granted by the court for good cause. So if you're a lawyer and you want to withdraw in a criminal case, most or maybe all states require you to discuss with your client before you do anything. You have to tell the court that you discussed it with the client. You have to say whether the client agrees that you can get out of the case. And even then, the court doesn't have to let you out. See what it says here. It says a def it, the withdrawal may be granted by the court for good cause. It's not a requirement. The court doesn't have to say, sure, you want out, you're out. Well, let's flip back over to the motion. This is John Pryor writing, I have made a diligent effort to find a lawyer to assist in this matter for a significant amount of time. The attorney who I located and agreed 
to try to get qualified has not yet been approved by the Public Defense Commission. The time for him to be of any assistance to me in preparing for this trial is long gone. I think this point will help John Pryor in his request to get out of the case because he's saying he made diligent efforts to get some help, to get someone else on board, and he couldn't do it. And it wasn't his fault. It was an administrative issue. He couldn't get the person approved by the commission that had to approve it. If the judge doesn't know exactly what was done to try to get another counsel, he's probably going to ask some questions about that. But John Pryor tries to go ahead and answer that because he knows that's immediately the court's question. Well, if you knew there was, you had one person, they had five, why didn't you get some help earlier? Why did you wait so long to ask for this? When he says it's too late, I think what he's saying is that there's not enough time for another attorney to get up to speed fast enough and then be able to help in any meaningful way. By the time they got up to speed, it's already trial time. And he's saying that's too slow. That's not really going to make a difference. Now, we did get a little more information about this attempt to bring in another attorney and that affidavit that was filed. I convinced an attorney from the Boise area to petition to become capital qualified. Capital means a capital offense, death penalty. However, that process, even after a significant amount of time, has not been approved by the Public Defense Commission. The time to have meaningful assistance by co-counsel has long passed. At the present time, even assuming I work 24 hours a day and seven days a week, could not complete all the tasks necessary to represent Mr. Daybell in this matter. It is no secret or surprise that the Public Defense Commission lacks the necessary number of capital qualified attorneys in this state to effectively represent all the needs of this state. Therefore, with the consent of and the request by Mr. Daybell for other counsel, I hereby request to withdraw from this matter. Let's read a little bit more. Because Mr. Daybell is facing the death penalty and has been determined indigent, doesn't have enough money to pay for his own lawyer, he is statutorily entitled to appointment of two counsel who are capital qualified at state expense. So Idaho has a provision that Chad Daybell is entitled for the state to pay for two attorneys. Now, John Pryor had trouble finding even one. He had trouble getting one person to come on board to help him. And now the judge is going to have to find not one, but two to replace John Pryor. So the judge is going to be in a very hard spot if John Pryor gets out. That's going to put even more pressure on the judge because if John Pryor doesn't even want to stay in the case and the defendant has only one lawyer instead of two, it starts to become something closer and closer to an appellate issue. And so that's one of the concerns. I wanted to show you what the requirements are under Idaho law. Uh, these are some of the requirements for an attorney who's going to help with a death penalty case. The lead trial defending attorney must meet or exceed the following experience levels. Active practitioner with no less than 10 years in criminal defense litigation. So anyone who's been practicing 9876 can't do it. Lead counsel in no less than 10 felony jury trial tried to verdict. Again, that's going to cut out most lawyers. Lead or co-counsel in no less than one capital case tried to verdict or capital sentencing. So this is going to be a tiny group to pull from. Very few people are going to fit all of those. Now, trial co-counsel defending attorney who are not qualified as lead trial counsel have to meet these experience levels. No less than five years litigation and one of the following lead counsel in no less than five felony jury trials tried to verdict or lead or co-counsel in no less than one capital case tried to verdict or capital sentencing. Those are very strong requirements. They aren't without reason. I mean, there are good reasons to require those qualifications, but at the same time, that limits the number of people who might possibly take this representation on, and that makes it more difficult to find somebody. Let's flip back over now to our motion. While undersigned counsel could accept appointment to this case if it were non-capital because Mr. Daybell is facing the death penalty. 
undersigned counsel cannot be appointed pursuant to statute. The counsel therefore moves to withdraw. I mentioned earlier that one possible solution would be for the court to appoint John Pryor. He already knows the case. He is currently representing Chad Daybell. Chad Daybell felt comfortable with him. Maybe the court would think, let me use state funds to pay John Pryor, but that's not going to work. John Pryor doesn't meet those qualifications. Now, Chad Daybell was allowed to hire any lawyer he wanted. He didn't have to hire somebody who met those requirements. But if the court is going to appoint someone for a capital murder case, then that person has to meet all those requirements. So you might be thinking, if the attorney wants to get out, the attorney just gets out, right? But it is not that simple. The court is going to be very reluctant to grant John Pryor's request to withdraw. And there are a lot of reasons for that. The number one reason is that it will delay trial. This case has been pending for years now, and we are just four months away from the trial. So if new lawyers come into the case, they're going to need time. They're going to have to read all those documents. They're going to have to go through all the discovery. And you may remember that Chad's lawyer attended a lot of Lori Vallow Daybell's trial. The new lawyer almost surely will not be somebody who attended that trial. So they're going to have to review Lori Vallow Daybell's trial. They are going to need a lot of time. And they're going to have new ideas. There will be new motions, new directions that the case will take. The delay also could affect the court. A trial this big and this significant requires a lot of arrangements. And by now, a lot of those have already been made. So those will have to be canceled and they'll have to be made all over again for the new trial date. And since Chad was declared indigent in January 2023, Chad's lawyer has known at least since then that he probably was not going to be paid. This is not a surprise to him. So the court is going to ask the question, why now? Why did you wait so long to raise this? But at the same time, the court has to be constantly thinking about two things, giving Chad Daybell a fair trial and doing everything possible to make sure that the trial is fair so that there is not a reversal when the case gets appealed. If the court tells the attorney he can't get out and he must try the case alone when the state has five lawyers and Chad Daybell has only one who doesn't even want to be there, that's going to be an issue on appeal. And not just the court, but everybody might have to do all that work over again. And there 100% will be an appeal, not just one, but multiple rounds of an appeal if the death penalty gets imposed. So this is going to be a hard issue for the court. And remember that the standard is pretty vague. The attorney can be allowed to withdraw if the court grants it for good cause. That leaves a lot of discretion. My guess, and this is purely a guess, is that the court will decide to let John Pryor out. But the court has a lot of discretion as to what he's going to do here. The court set a very quick hearing for this week on the 18th. Now, I would imagine the court is thinking very hard about whether there is any way to keep the case on track for trial. And the state is going to come face to face with the question too, should they drop the death penalty? Because that would mean Chad Daybell's present attorney, John Pryor, would not need to be capital qualified. He could be appointed and paid by the state to represent Chad Daybell. The trial could go on as planned. But the state has a lot of reason not to drop the death penalty. Most importantly, of course, is that they've already decided that they think the death penalty is the just result in this case. They think that's what should happen in this case. And the state also has to consider what it would mean in other cases if they drop the death penalty here in this case. Will they be setting a precedent? It, could they be encouraging defense lawyers or defendants to have lawyers withdraw at the very last minute in hopes that the state will be forced to drop the death penalty in those cases? So these are very hard questions, and we will see what happens on the 18th. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you back for updates.